I'm Andrew, and I'm setting out to make better videos for diesel enthusiasts. Follow along as I review products, do how-tos, and share my personal trucks here on Just Diesels. I think it's official that 37s have kind of become the new 35. Uh, it used to be really rare to see 37s on trucks. Now, I feel like everybody's running 37s, but I also feel like more people than ever are trying to run 37s and not doing it right, right? They're stuck doing huge amounts of cutting, all this stuff, and things aren't quite working out because I think they're not getting the right information. So, in today's video, I'm basically gonna talk about what you need to fit 37s on an 03 to 13 Ram 2500. Um, if you have a newer Ram or a Chevy or a Ford, this is gonna be all different information, but if you have an 03 to 13 Ram 2500, 3500, this is the information that you need to fit 37s correctly. So before we get into this, I want to talk really quickly about fitting, right? There's a lot of people that say stuff fits when it doesn't. Uh, and so what I really want to talk about here is what actually the term fitting means, right? So when I say fit, what I mean by fitting is that you can run your truck off-road, bottom the suspension and turn lock to lock, right? I don't mean when your truck is parked static in a parking lot, you can turn your wheels left to right and have things clear because suspension moves, right? If you clear just parked in a parking lot, that doesn't really mean anything because your suspension is going to move up and so is your wheel and tire. So unless your stuff clears when the suspension is actually flexed, it ain't clearing. So I think that's something really important, right? Where they say stuff fits, but it doesn't actually fit in the real world. So I think it's really important to define what fits and what doesn't by defining the term fit. The other thing that really matters is how much cutting is required to actually fit your stuff, right? If fitting requires cutting off half your fender, it doesn't fit. So what I'm calling fit in this video is fitting lock to lock when turning with very, very minimal cutting, right? Cutting where no one would notice that your truck is trimmed. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here. So. Let's dig into this, let's figure out what we need. Now the most important part, and I cannot stress this enough, is wheel and tire specs, particularly the wheel specs, right? You can put whatever suspension you want on, that doesn't really matter, we'll get into that more later, but the most important part is wheel specs. You cannot fit a 37 without the correct wheel specs, or I guess you can if you wanna cut everything up, but what you will need is an eight and a half to nine inch wide wheel with plus 18 to plus 25 offset. That's non-negotiable, right? You can't tell me, hey, what about this negative 18? It's not gonna work. If you wanna go into the negatives, you're gonna be stepping down to a 35, a 33, something like that. Don't even think about the negatives if you're doing a 37 inch tire on an 03 to 12 Ram. Now, as if you wanna really push it, what I have on my truck is about as far as you can possibly go without really cutting your truck up, right? So my truck has a 5.5 inch backspace, nine and a half inch wide wheel, which is around positive 6.8 offset. That's mounted to a 37 by 13 and a half wide tire. That is pretty much gonna be my personal limit in terms of function, right? Before I have to trim too much where it becomes not worth it. Um, I have seen people you know, run zero offset 4.75 backspace wheels with 37, 13 and a half, but to me, that's a little bit too much trimming. Um, that setup is going to take pretty significant trimming of your pinch weld, pretty significant trimming of your fender. We'll get to that later. But what I really wanna stress is that if you are looking for minimal trimming, and I think most people are, plus 18 to plus 25 offset and a wheel that is no wider than nine inches is gonna be your sweet spot. Anything out of there is going to require more trimming, more cutting, or just won't fit at all. So if you have a wheel that you really like that's negative 12 or negative 18, scratch it off the list because it's not gonna work with a 37 inch tire. And I know that's gonna make a lot of people upset, right? It's hard to find wheels with no specs, but those are hard numbers. You just can't make it work if your wheel's the wrong spec. Now, the other direction I see people go all the time is they try and use the OEM wheels. That's cool, right? Keeping your factory wheel with a 37 inch tire, it looks awesome. The problem is that an OEM wheel is around plus 45 offset, so it's extremely tucked in. What's gonna happen is it's gonna avoid your body, so that's cool, right? You have less trimming of the body, but that tire is gonna be put directly into your control arms or directly into your sway bar when you're turning. And that's not something you can lift your way out of, right? If the wheel is too tucked in, it doesn't matter if you have a 10 inch lift on your truck, it's still gonna hit the control arms and it's still gonna hit the sway bar. So that's really important to consider. If you were looking to do a 37 on the factory wheel, just accept that when you are turning lock to lock, like in a parking lot or something, it's gonna rub on the control arms and the sway bar and there's really nothing you can do about it. 
I've seen people try and do spacers, but the problem is that the size space that you need is, is around an inch or so. And the problem with those is that they're not the bolt-on style spacer, they're like the sandwich style spacer where they just slide onto the studs and get sandwiched between the wheel and the spacer. And what that does is it really reduces the actual purchase of the lug nut, right? The lug nut can't thread on very far. And that's when you see people's wheels rolling down the side of the freeway. So if you want to do a 37 on a factory wheel, just accept that it's going to rub on the control arms and the sway bar. And that really won't hurt anything, right? It's just rubbing the tire on a hard metal part but it's gonna make noise, so just be aware of that. Now, the next thing to consider is suspension, and this is where you actually have some wiggle room, right? Basically, you have three requirements that you need to meet. One, your truck has to be about two and a half to three inches higher. Now, keep in mind that two and a half to three inch height, what you're really doing is, is just giving yourself a little bit more space, but in theory here, if this doesn't fit at stock height, it's not going to fit, right? Because your suspension moves and compresses. So if you have a three inch leveling system on your truck and you compress the suspension three inches, you're back at factory height, right? So all that is is like driving into a driveway and you're back at factory height. So if your wheel and tire setup doesn't clear it kind of factory height, it's not gonna clear with a three inch level. So this is another common misconception I see is that you have to do X amount of lift or you know Y amount of lift or whatever to get a 37 on your truck. But in reality, a lift is something that changes, right? It doesn't matter if your truck's lifted three inches when you hit a bump, it's back down to zero. So that's something to consider too. Uh, you wanna make sure that your wheel and tire setup is at the right, right specs, right? Back to that wheel spec that's gonna fit with suspension. So in terms of suspension, what we're gonna need is, like, like I said, two and a half to three inch level. You're also gonna need a longer adjustable track bar and you're also gonna need longer control arms. One thing that I see that's really common is that people like to get adjustable length arms, right? Uh, I see it all the time. People can't clear a wheel and tire setup and they say, push the axle farther forward, right? Get adjustable arms to push the axle farther forward and you'll get the clearance that you need. The catch is that you can only go so far before stuff starts hitting itself. A half inch is about the max you can go before you're gonna have issues with the track bar hitting the axle, the axle hitting the track bar, the frame, all that kind of stuff, right? That, that system is not made to get shifted that far forward without relocating everything else. So if you're pushing that farther than about a half inch, you're gonna have issues. Now that half inch is actually going to be mandatory with a two and a half to three inch level. The reason being is that your axle doesn't move straight up and down. As your suspension cycles, it's actually gonna move in an arc. So as it drops out, right, you lift your truck three inches, it's gonna drop closer towards the cab of the truck. So the reason why Carly, Thur and those guys have a half inch longer control arm is because that's what centers the front axle in the wheel well after a two and a half to three inch lift. So if you are doing a two and a half to three inch lift, you are going to want around a half inch longer control arm. You're also gonna want a control arm that has notches in it or a bend for clearance. So again, those Carly high clearance arms are gonna have a fabricated notch in them. Those Thurn arms are gonna have a bend in them. Uh, the reason why I'm suggesting those two is I really like their build quality, uh, their joint quality. I feel like there's a lot of other manufacturers that kind of skimp on the joints. Uh, particularly like Metal Cloak, I had those on my truck and I just felt like the joints weren't as high quality as Thurn and Carly and you actually felt it in the ride of the truck. So it is worthwhile ponying up the money for a nicer set of control arms. Now the other thing you're gonna need is a track bar. A track bar is gonna be key because again, as you're lifting your truck, right, if you do that two and a half to three inch lift, it's gonna shift the axle over slightly and it's gonna pull on your factory track bar because it's a little bit too short for that new height that the truck is at, especially if you're drooping it out with that new system. So once again, uh, I really like to use the Carly and Theron track bars. I think those are the two highest quality on the market. If you wanna go with a track bar drop or something similar because that's cheaper, go ahead. But basically what you're gonna need is something to recenter the axle under the front of the truck after you do that two and a half to three inch leveling system on the truck. Now the final piece of the puzzle here is going to be trimming. And the trimming is really gonna be determined by what your exact wheel and tire combo is on the truck, right? For example, a BF Goodrich tends to run actually smaller than the stated size, whereas like a Toyo MT tire is actually larger than the stated size. So if you look at like a 37, 13 half Toyo MT, it's actually like almost 14 inches wide. So you gotta be careful with what your wheel and tire spec is, um, but that's really gonna determine your trimming. So there is no, you know, trim one inch up on the fender line or do that, there's no formula. Basically, it's gonna be on a case-by-case -case basis. But if you follow what I said earlier, right, so you're trying to shoot for that plus 18 to plus 25 offset wheel, um, you should be able to fit a 37, 12 and a half, or 37, 13 and a half with pretty minimal trimming. Keep in mind though, that 12 and a half is gonna have less trimming than the 13 and a half, right? Anytime you go wider or bigger or anything else, you're gonna have more trimming. So what I trimmed on my truck, right, this is a third gen, is a little bit of the fender liner in the front and the back. Uh, I used a razor blade and I just heated it up with a torch and you're basically just gonna slice through that fender liner. And I'm sorry I don't have video of that because I did it a while ago, um, but basically what you're gonna do is just take that hot razor blade and just slice right through the fender liner. It should go through just like butter. Obviously you don't wanna to trim too much, um, so kind of play with it, see where you need to trim. Uh, I like to put my truck up on jack stands and turn the wheel. 
uh, by hand and I can kind of see where stuff is going to hit as the suspension moves up. Trim accordingly and then if I need to I can trim more. Uh, but that's usually how I do it so I don't trim too much to start with. Uh, fourth gen is going to be the same deal. Uh, you're basically just going to take that hot razor blade, trim across your fender liner. Um, I find that it's really nice to actually make a mark with your finger in the liner, with the liner in the truck and then pull it out of the truck to cut it. I can get a much cleaner cut with it outside of the truck. For example, when I had those 37 12 and a half on the 5.5 inch backspace wheel that I have, I very, very, very minimally had to cut my pinch bolt, right? It was just a little bit of that bottom corner. Basically, instead of being a perfect 90, mine was kind of like rounded. With the 37 13 and a half that I have now, I had to go farther into that pinch bolt. So instead of using the flap disc, this time I actually had to get out the cutting wheel and kind of make that a little bit more of a dramatic curve. Um, nothing crazy, I'm not really cutting into anything important, right? This is all inside the fender well of the truck, so you'd never know it happened, but I did have to do that. And it's gonna kind of vary depending on what you're gonna do. Now the fourth gens actually have a little bit more room in the fender. With the third gens, you actually have to cut a little bit of the fender. So if you notice on my truck, uh, this is trimmed more than I originally had trimmed it with the 12 and a half, but I did have to do a little bit of the fender uh, where the liner attaches, there's a bolt there. I've trimmed almost up to there. It used to come down a little bit farther. Um, again, this is very case by case, so it's gonna depend on whatever your exact wheel and tire spec is, but you will have to trim a little bit of the fender on a third gen. On a fourth gen, you won't have to, it'll just be that pinch weld and the fender liner. All right guys, so I hope that helps you. Uh, this is a little bit of a boring kind of technical video, but I get this question a lot, uh, particularly on Instagram, people asking how I fit 37s on my truck. So I just wanna make a video that shows you guys how to fit 37s on a 03 to 12 or 13 Ram 2500, 3500 truck. Um, this is gonna vary case by case, so if you have questions, ask below. But like I said, the biggest thing is gonna be your wheel and tire spec particularly your wheel spec. You just can't go into those negatives. You gotta really stick around a plus 18 to plus 25 offset, especially if you don't wanna trim. So, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Comment below, I will happily help them. Uh, if you guys wanna talk about your wheel and tire specs, again, comment below. Appreciate you guys watching. If you want more info, please subscribe to the channel. New videos every week. Thank you.